Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for being here. I appreciate your taking the last minute joiners. Please come in. Um, I appreciate your taking the time on your busy schedule. Probably haven't met a lot of providers and banks, you know, telling you, me, 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 I'm the best, and do stuff with me, etc. So I have a promise. Today, we're not going to talk about buzzword. We're not going to talk about blockchain innovation. We're going to talk about something real good old-fashioned treasury problem, which is signature in management, okay? I have a little question, if I can ask for the corporates in the audience to raise their hands. How many corporates? Okay. Same question on the bank. Who comes from the bank side? Okay. So, a little icebreaker question on the corporate side. Who has felt like this when dealing with bank signature in management? Yeah? Okay. I thought so. And who has felt like this when actually doing the changes on signature management. I just talked to a corporate this morning, said, I have to do these changes for 400 banks when something happens, right? So, and the last question is, who has made such a phone call sometimes when you have to go, for example, for your audit or, you know, do your bank's change or whatever? So I, I think we could all empathize with that, yeah? Um, what happened? Uh, well, as I said, we're going to talk about something real, something tangible, which is signature management. And I'm going to use an analogy that I picked from somebody that says that a solution in this environment is like the monster of Loch Ness. Everybody talks about it. Nobody's ever seen one, right? I can see. Well, we, we actually find the beast, and we, I, I think we kill the beast, because we built, we built a solution that brings value to both sides of the equation, that give corpses the possibility to deal with reliable bank data with timestamp, to have all your requirements in one go, to track your cases, see what's going on with each of the bank, who's doing what. And on the other side, we think that the solution has to bring benefit also to the other side, to the bank, so allowing them to give a, a great client experience without any change whatsoever to their current procedure and rules, and remaining in full control. We know that this is important for the banks. My name is Ricardo Balsamo. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of Delega, which is a Swiss-based fintech with a mission to digitize signature management. Now, let's deep li dive on how we did it. One word, co-creation. We built a working group. So not only Swift as working group, we also did a working group with a uh, few different banks and large corporation bringing together the expertise of both sides. We believe that this is an industry problem that needs an industry solution. Isolated attempt has not worked in the past, right? What are the principles of this working group? Well, like I said, co-creation, but definitely all the parties at the table have agreed that this is not a technological problem. There is technology to go to Mars. I'm sure there is technology, and we are sure there is technology to come overcome this issue. It's a consensus process issue. Hence, again, the collaboration between corporates and bank is key. Competition makes no sense, right? This is a classical example where one plus one makes three. Uh, absolutely kudos to the bank that joined us in early. So Deutsche Bank and Barclays who actually have put time, resources, and sweat into this. They, they talk about innovation. Everybody talks of innovation, but kudos to these two banks that said, well, it's we, we also do it. We don't just talk about it, yeah? And a solution that works now, right? The corporate community is tired of having very ambitious but never come to a fruition initiative. I'm sure you've been into many of those. Uh, the uh, ubiquitous result was, let's get it done. Let's move quick. Let's get to tangible results. COVID has not helped us at the beginning, but now here we are. We ask in the, our banking community and corporate community um, to tell us how they see the easiness. The overwhelming result is this, comparing to the status quo. This is so much better on both sides. And what happened? Well, we just didn't talk about it. We made it happen. This is a recent article on TMI. You can all go and, and check it out. We launched in September with very um, complex treasuries set up from different uh, corporates and, and uh, some of the banks present here. 
Uh, to give you some example, one of the corporates had 180 person run through the application, making changes as well within the process for, for their headquarter. Another company confirmed accounts in nine locations in EMEA, over two banks. So uh, it, it's kind of, it's real. We just need to talk about it, right? A little view of the system. I thought to give you, obviously this is going to be a, an appetizer, a glimpse, um, but I, I want to put real screen in front of you to, to give you a glimpse of how the application has been built. So I'm going to step here. Hopefully this will work. Okay. See, one of the key aspects was, and the ask was, please, please make it easy for us from a corporate perspective. And that's where we put our efforts. And the overwhelming feedback has been that our UX has been appreciated for their simplicity. We actually, on purpose, did not build any user material so far because we want to see the, how users navigate through it. What can you do? Essentially, and, and I'm going to drive you through the journey, we built an end-to-end -end logic to allow corporates to start with the changes. And you can see what, what option you have. You can assign your representative, replace them, amend them. But the journey starts with, what do I need to do if I have to make a changes with 30 banks? What documents want bank number one versus bank number two? We build the logic where you can obviously select who in your company, search them by name. So there are all different kind of nice things that you can do to make the user journey easier. But essentially, the holy grail is allowing corporates to display and see which requirements can is needed from each of the bank. Uh, we're going to get there in a second. Here's so, so you can see, you can select the company or uh, the country where the companies you want to assign the rights for are there. So you pick your company. And in a second, you'll see that you can select the signatory that you want to assign the power for. And at the end of the journey, you see that this, you define your category. We can allow multiple languages. You can define exactly who signed with what. So, and this allows. Uh, Important to say, it's not a one-fit-all. Every corporate is able to customize their own rules. Um, their own legacy procedure, whatever you have in Treasury, this is fully customizable to your uh, internal procedure. Here you select the banks, and, and here in the next page you'll see where this is your to-do list, organized per bank. As I said, we ask if the solution has been used before for that use case, we remember the requirements that are, are going to be used. We cross-reference the list of, across banks. So if you have done a change and document one was needed two months from now, if another bank or the same bank want the same document, we allow you to not do... How many times have you been asked the same document from the same bank, right? Um, this is the, this if you like, the, the solution, the, the nice resolution is that Treasury people brought their experience into this building it with us. Um, one last thing, you can also, it's, it's an option, it's not a must have, but it's some corporates have asked for it. You can also build your own treasury power of attorney out of it. Uh, you can use yours. So God forbid we want to challenge your legal team and say to change your legal template. So for the one that doesn't, they don't have to. But you can build your own treasury temp, uh, POA with all the information about the user, what's their specimen signature, what are their powers, and so far and so on. Then the application get pushed to the bank. Another uh, ask from the corporate is, we want to know what happened. When we send this to the bank, who's working on it? How long does it take? Have they opened it up? So you can track the status. Has it been approved internally on my end? So there's a four eyes principle embedded in the cycle. But also, you can set who has approved in which bank, in which moment when has approved each case for each person. So that allow you, you as a treasury organization, to always track who has the power to do what, having always the stamp of the bank. This is what uh, the user experience from the bank side look like. As a one-to-one -one version of your to-do list, they can see exactly who is the change about, for what kind of power, so the before and after, if you like. These are uh, the requirements I've asked them to fulfill for this company with these details. So we also know exactly what bank needs to review. They can approve 
or, or not and giving the reason for not approving for each of the cases. And um, we also allow them, it's going to come in a second, uh, one of the asks was, okay, we, some clients ask us to actually give them a real, real confirmation. We also allow the banks to customize a letter that can be used internally for their purpose to give you a written confirmation whenever required. So it's, a, it's an extra feature that in case the bank has in their process, it's there for them to operate. So as you can see, uh, the bank can create their own template, download it, and then potentially add their legal text, etc. So we, we try to make life easier for them too when they have to give a confirmation back to the corporates. Yeah? Uh, last but not least, the reporting. So you, uh, you have the possibility to have reporting uh, on, on a company side and the bank confirmation. We'll go through those two in the next screen. The reporting is essential and, and, and it allows you to have a clear, uh, confirmed by your bank view of who can sign what. It can be done by signatory, by legal entity, by company or by bank, right? So you can f there's a different filter you can interrogate the application, like I said, per bank, but if you run your report, just to give an example, a full view, who has what power, when did the bank said yes the last time, you can filter by bank, by type of profile, so it's it essentially a report that allows you to have a full visibility about what, what's happening in your, in your company from that perspective. As I said, you can, you can also filter it, it can be exported in PDF, in Excel, and last but not least, the confirmation. This thing will sign a second. Like I said, you important ask from the corporate was, we want to know when is the last time that the bank to told us that it was okay, right? Uh, in, in a second, you'll see the bank confirmation. What is that? Another ask from the bank, for the corporate community is, yes, we have now a set of data, but my CFO wants to verify this information every three months or every six months. How can I do it? you can send your data into a batch to your bank and per bank they will receive a one-to-one -one view of this data and they will be able to tell you well out of these 120 people actually number 111 uh, I don't have it in my books we all know what it means especially on audit time when you have to make sure that your books are in order that your view of the data doesn't match what the bank is on the record eh? it's not fun uh, when the auditors are at your door and time runs, right? It's, it, we all have been there. In my previous life as a, uh, as a banker, I remember a few cases where time was, um, was of the essence and uh, data were not available. So essentially, you can have a view in respect to, again, signatory by company, by country. And the most important thing is having when was the last time? So one thing is having when the bank approved it. The last column tells you when it was the last time that the bank has reconfirmed them. Again, some company needs that data to be not older than three months, not older than six months, and so far and so on. Right. Um, another thing, we believe in the ecosystem. I pushed this whole co-creation story. Uh, recently, we, uh, we launched, as you can see, it's 20th of September. We launched a partnership with TIS. Uh, Jörg is here in the, in the audience, so feel free to uh, reach to him as well. Where essentially we want to bring other uh, major ecosystem players into the equation by somehow joining forces, having our interface, our workflow engine, leveraging their existing infrastructure. TIS has a secure, robust, German Panzer style connectivity <laughs> with banks, so no better partner for us to start with. Uh, last uh, client, somebody in our group couldn't be here last minute, so we, we asked him to give us. Related to signatory management uh, okay. is extremely time consuming and cumbersome. It is even wor worse when you are an international corporate with multiple banks around the globe. On top of this, we can all agree that that is an historical pain point for corporates. I'm impressed with the legal approach uh, for addressing this historical challenge. The multi-banking paperless solution is a big step forward in terms of user experience and for corporates such as Ayata will bring important benefits in terms of efficiencies and cost reduction. Like I said, he couldn't be here, so I asked him to give you a little note. What's our ask? Well, let's end this pain point. It's possible. 
Um, it's it, it's a joint effort. It's a community effort. So please please join us. Ask questions. We welcome corporates and banks to to leverage the work we so the heavy lifting has been done so that's good news for you but we we really we really like to build this ecosystem together with more corporates and more banks thank you everyone